had me worried for about two I seconds. Know, I but... guess. Do you that? So hey, I'll have you sit right here, Alex. And then we'll do that. We'll be there. Just sit right in the middle. Right. Right. Okay, here we go. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for showing up today, appreciate it. Um, for those of you who are sticking out the weather today uh, and have made it through the morning sessions, you are in luck, uh, I think, because um, uh, in my role uh, covering uh, the wireless industry, one of my uh, most favorite topics of the past year has been the fixed wireless uh, industry, uh, which stretches actually far beyond 5G and is uh, uh, in increasingly fascinating. I think um, there's almost 4 million uh, people in the U.S. right now are fixed wireless users. Um, most of them are in rural areas, but uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a push into urban areas for, for fixed wireless, and it's, you know, creating some competition for the uh, established wireline companies and you know Verizon is is, is well documented as uh, sort of entering into the space but uh, uh, I would say that Starry is the really the company to watch in this area of deploying fixed wireless services into urban locations um, and so Alex I'm so glad that you are here today um, and so my first question for you is maybe just to talk a little bit about Starry and, and particular kind, and particularly kind of what what makes Starry different. What's the what's the sort of Starry story yeah. here? Yeah. Um, so happy happy to be here. Um, Starry is we're about four and a half five year old company, and and what we're focused on is essentially delivering fiber speed um, broadband to residential and ultimately commercial um, wirelessly. And, um, and so we're doing that with, with 5G wireless systems. Um, and a big part of the innovation is, is essentially how to kind of reduce cost and how to increase deployability and how to reduce reliance on municipal infrastructure um, and furniture. And so we essentially um, think about um, cost of homes past, we think about cost of coverage, and we think about um, speed of deployment. And so to give you a sense of, of, of kind of a scale, in about an 18 month period, we were able to deploy a network in Boston, one of our first markets, that covers two thirds of metropolitan Boston um, at a cost of less than, than $5 million. And so if you compare that to anything that the, the wire um, incumbents are doing, it would be, you know, uh, a cost reduction of a factor of you know 10, 20, uh, roughly, and so um, so so that's on the kind of network approach side, and and what we saw is a massive opportunity to to not only solve cost issues, deployability issues, but also s solve some of the consumer need issues, which is that incumbent utilities um, think about the customer last. I think, um, at least that's our opinion, and we we thought about putting the customer first. So the entire um, infrastructure um, uh, network approach is, is, is how do we think about the customer first? How do we make transparency of the network quality and the network speeds uh, uh, primary? And how do we actually bring customer support and customer experience alive for people uh, in a way that just isn't being done by, by cable or fiber? All right, and that's sort of the Starry difference right there is yeah. that, that customer approach. But, and you described Starry as a 5G provider, but um, my understanding is the transmission technology that you're using is, is not 5G. So maybe you can talk a little bit about whether, sure. how you define yeah. 5G and, and whether yeah. Starry is a 5G. Or were the 5G events, so I had to say <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, that, you no, you so, get through the doors that yeah, way, exactly. that makes it easier, yeah. I had to do that to get on stage. <laughs> But um, so, so 5G, obviously, it's pretty standard for everyone, right? And so 5G is still being defined. We think of the world of 5G as fixed 5G and mobile 5G. And obviously, we're, uh, we're, we're, we think of ourselves as um, we define 5G as low latency and, 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 and high bandwidth. Um, a lot of the mobile standards are still being ratified. A lot of the fixed standards are still being ratified. So, so that's how we think about it. It's a next generation fixed and mobile network. We're, we're working on the fixed part. Um, and, and, you know, um, to put it in perspective, we're thinking about multi-gig lengths. We're thinking about latency at, you know, sub seven millisecond levels. And so for us, that's what 5G is. That's the promise of 5G. 
Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, and so you, uh, so let's talk a little bit about those, the performance metrics, just a little bit of the network since we're here at a sort of a big network show. Um, and so you talk, I mean, you've, you're covering essentially Metro Boston with $5 million worth of equipment. Mm -hmm. So what, so can you tell us what, what that network looks like, what the speeds to customers are, mm -hmm. um, and, and what, you're, what you're seeing on that network right now? Right. Um, so our, our network approach is a hub and spoke uh, model, and so we, um, we essentially deploy with Starry Beams, which is our, our hub. We have a kilometer and a half of coverage, um, and underneath that, we, we deploy Starry Point, which is our, our transceiver. Um, and currently, in the first phase of the business, we're focusing on, on multi-dwelling unit uh, apartment buildings. And so, um, and so it's really a point to multi-point uh, approach. And so we have a hub, we have starry points, we do access agreement deals with real estate, and that is essentially how we deploy the network. We then use existing wiring to get to residence units. And so our ability to, you know, we have about 25 sites, that's uh, hub sites, that's what's covering uh, Boston and hundreds and hundreds of, um, of apartment buildings that are, that are live. Uh, serviceable uh, through the network. Okay, um, and and so uh, and what are you seeing on that network? And or let's see, can you talk about customer numbers? I cannot. Okay, but, can you but, talk about usage numbers in Boston? The yeah. sort of usage of the network as a, as a fixed wireless provider. I mean, we've heard from uh, from some of the big uh, ISP companies like Comcast that they're seeing 25 percent growth in terms of usage on their network even this year. And so I'm I'm assuming you're seeing kind of the same thing or more. Um, yeah, and, and we, we, our point of comparison is sort of what traditionally what, what incumbent providers see. But um, yeah, so the average subscriber on our network is probably using 350 um, gigabytes of data on a monthly basis. Our top 10% about 750, and we see about a percent or two of our users using over a terabyte of data monthly. So it's it's. Um, it's absolutely enormous, and it's sort of at the core of our thesis, which is that, you know, for a long time, for decades to come, we're going to see the need to have a fixed service for the home and a mobile service for being out and about, just because of the amount of data that's being consumed. So you think about video calling, about 65% of our subscribers work from home more than 25 hours a week. Hmm. And so that's video calling, which obviously you know, is, is a very, very, very big data consumption application, um, both on the download side and on the upload side. So that's where symmetrical networks are really important, which is how we think about the world, is absolute symmetry. Um, so we deliver 200 megabits per second up, up and down. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's clear that we're also seeing quite a bit of the, the cord cutting uh, data consumption habits. Uh, most of the subscribers we have, um, you know, are not using traditional cable TV, streaming most of their content um, through over-the-top TV applications or, um, or some of the, the, the movie and, and TV um, services like Netflix. Mm -hmm. But that's the scale of the data that we're seeing on yeah. our network on, a, on average. And I think a big, I mean, a big question in, in fixed wireless, and we've heard some presentations over the course of the past day and a half about you know, the spectrum that you use can support X number of users and X amount of data, and it's a sort of mathematical calculation. And so I think the, you know, the, the ultimate question for fixed wireless and wireless in general is, is can it, you know, can it keep pace with that, with that usage? So I mean, I mean, can you say what your <laughs> network uh, capacity might be? And if you're concerned about it, if you have to add additional sites, if, if you do reach a certain level of capacity, I mean, is that, and how you're architecting that yeah. for demand? Yeah, so, so it's inherent in our, in our uh, approach to deployability is the ability to add capacity. Okay. And so we think about initial coverage, and then we think about capacity planning. And so for us, it's, it's really as simple as adding a starry beam to an existing sector, and you double the, the capacity. You add three, three beams and, and triple and so on. So our ability to cover quickly is also matched by our ability to add capacity quickly. So it's obviously a great problem for us to have. Is if we start to see penetration in particular sectors or in particular beam sites, we, we very quickly are able to, uh, to match that capacity. Okay. So I mean, and that's, and that's really what millimeter wave spectrum is best at, right? It's, it's, a, it's a very, very, very high capacity, high throughput um, frequency. 
And this is you're using unlicensed spectrum in order to keep the costs low, at least initially. Um, uh, it's it's it ha it's a it's an MTA mar a market test authority license. Okay. Um, you know we see part of that spectrum going to sharing uh, protocols. Um, so so at at present it is it is unlicensed. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we kind of covered the the network part of it, and I think I could I, I could go on and on about you know the the performance that you're seeing on the network. But but let's talk about um, Starry's uh, plans for the rest of this year and potentially into next year, because I mean the, the the plans are ambitious. I think you you uh, Starry has announced that they are offering service here in Denver, yep. um, and and there's a there's a number of cities on the rollout plan. So maybe you can just kind of give us an update of sort of where Starry is right now in terms of. Uh, 2019 plans and, and if you're on pace or not, or uh, yep. just sort of an update. Sure, yeah, so we're, we, we started in Boston. We're live in, in five cities, including Denver, uh, Washington, D.C., New York, Los Angeles um, are our five cities. We're beginning our work in, in the next 17 cities. Um, and so, uh, you know, on pace is, is kind of a relative question. You know, for us, it's been, um, it's been really a question of, of speed to build the initial network, and then ultimately it's it's um, it's good old-fashioned work to build teams and um, and start to get deployment um, execution. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that learning happened in our first market that's now being applied to the next four, and then ultimately the next 17. Um, so we're you know we're pretty pleased about the process uh, progress, uh, both in terms of. Uh, our ability to get initial coverage, but also the take-up rate. So we've been incredibly uh, uh, surprised, I guess, in the early days on kind of the penetration that we get just just from showing up. And so, and if you take a, yeah. if you take an average building, let's say it's a hundred-unit apartment building, we see within the first sixty to ninety days that about twenty percent of the building, you know, takes the service. Um, uh, and so. You know, uh, at scale, that's obviously an, an incredible uh, you know business to be in, and I think that underlies the point, which is that people are dying for choice, right? In many places, there's one or two providers uh, offering m mostly the same high-priced um, services, mostly bundled with TV uh, and phone. But if you come in with internet only, great speed, great customer experience, you you can see that kind of um, that kind of success. Um, so rollout is. Is, is ongoing. Uh, one of the things that we learn in the first five cities is actually it really has to be network first. So our next seven c 17 cities, we're approaching from a network first before building out full teams, and that, that'll come later. Okay, so you're installing a base station first and then developing sort of a sales team after that. Exactly, kind of thing. Okay. exactly. Uh, but yeah, you, like you said, essentially 20% of, of possible customers are signing up within the first 60 to 90 60 days. 60 to 90 days, yeah. Which, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. you can see why I'm interested in fixed wireless. <laughs> like, that's a pretty impressive number. Um, so uh, with, the, with the few minutes that we have, we have remaining, I wondered if you can maybe talk a little bit about um, the, the long-term prospects of Starry. I know you're sort of right in the middle of this, this sort of uh, initial build-out. Um, but, you know, as I'm, I'm assuming you're doing some, you know, planning for next year. And so I'm kind of wondering, like, what's the... You know, what's what 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 might we expect from Starry in in 2020? Yeah, so um, so a lot of the things we think about obviously is focusing on execution, focusing on the customer, delivering, you know, incredible service uh, to the customers we have, and then growing that base. So that's that's certainly primary for us, um, as well as beginning to make plans on on, on future cities. Mm -hmm. But we definitely think about you know what the future network ought to look like. Um, we're, we're we're very interested in and how to build and design a network that can also be application-centric. Um, so we think about applications in gaming or video calling or video streaming um, where the network can be conscious of the application that's being used. Um, so if you think about a service like Google Stadia, it's incredibly reliant on the underlying service you know, to do a lot of things. I think it, it requires something like 35 megabits per second of, of pipe uh, symmetrical you know, to have the kind of experience that Google is hoping for that. And a lot of these networks were never built that way, right? So both in terms of latency, but in terms of throughput, but also in terms of transit patterns. And so a big initiative for us is to start to think about both what 
applications we're seeing in use, how the traffic patterns need to be sort of built, and then how to think about applications in the future. Um, the second, I would say, big initiative for us is to think about, um, you know, how to, how, to, how to stack services on top of, of internet only service that makes sense and that are good for consumers. Um, it seems pretty clear now that the current bundling of TV, although it's convenient for internet service providers, isn't necessarily good for consumers, right? It's driving high costs, it's driving low choice, is driving a lot of uh, you know, billing and pricing issues, both actually on the provider and on the consumer side. So what are the kinds of applications and services that actually people want from their internet service provider? And so it could be cloud storage, or it could be home automation services. Um, you know, part of it is we have a front row seat into what internet connectivity is to the unit, what the Wi-Fi propagation looks like in the home, and so um, our ability to support those kinds of services, and we do this today. We get calls about Nest. We get calls about Alexa. We get calls about web browsing pages being slow to load. So, and we can service and support those questions because of um, the kind of visibility that we've built into our network. So we're very interested in what, what that could look like. Huh, super interesting. All right. Well, I see we've run out of time. Unfortunately, I could go on and on, but this is good. Please join me in thanking our, ex our excellent speaker today. Thanks, I think we head out. Great, thank you very much to Mike and Alex.